Welcome classic rock fans to the third instalment of bands that should retire already, as voted for by you, you stinkers. And if you're new to this channel, please do click like, subscribe and check that notification bell so in the words of Steven Tyler, you don't miss a thing. So enough of this flim flam, let's get on with it, shall we? Number 10 is Foreigner. A lot of people feel that this has been acting as a tribute band for quite a while now, with a lot of bad feeling between previous members. Uh, Dr. Seuss famously said that adults are obsolete children, which very much sums up this band and perhaps many on this list. Lou Graham has been fairly critical of this band, often referring to them, I think somewhat dismissively, as New Foreigner, you know, pointing to the fact that a lot of the original members have recently passed away, including Ed Gagliardi and, of course, Ian MacDonald, and also pointing to uh, Mick Jones' lack of participation in this. He's kind of on a zero-hours contract with this band, I think. I think these days, when it comes to a live Foreigner show, Mick Jones, uh, somewhere during the set list, will pop his head around the curtain, give the audience a wave and then leave. Let's be honest, this band is like a, an ailing old nag, which somebody should have taken out and shot already. Number nine is Leonard Skinnerd, another kind of tribute act trading on a great, great name. I think it was Richie Medlock that said recently, I challenge anyone out there to take the stage and play this music as well as we can play it. Or words to that effect. But that's really not the point, is it? I'm sure these guys are great, great musicians who play this music just like the record. Notice I emphasised like the record or like the original band. But can these guys really call themselves Leonard Skinner? I mean, legally, yes, but just because you can use the name doesn't mean you always should. How many of these guys uh, were part of that lineup that sung Free Bird and Sweet Home Alabama? I'll be honest with you, they do look suspiciously like a tribute band to me. Number eight is Queen. Now, a lot of you voted for Queen. I'm not sure I entirely agree with you. Now, of course, Freddie was irreplaceable. There's no doubt about that. But Adam Lambert is as close uh, as close to Freddie as you're going to find, I think. A fine set of pipes on him and a camper than a row of tents. And a wonderful showman to boot. To be honest, I'd rather they just called themselves Queen rather than Queen and Adam Lambert. Uh, I think Adam Lambert should uh, shit or get off the regal pot, so to speak. I think they put out an album of original material with this lineup. It would kind of legitimise them as, a, as the band going forward, as far as I'm concerned. No, I don't think the Queen and Paul Rogers combination was a good fit, quite frankly. But Adam Lambert's probably uh, the best guy possible to slip into those well-worn Freddy loafers. Do you consider these guys to be a tribute act? I, mean, I don't consider you've got two original members there and they do put on a bloody good show. Number seven is ZZ Top. This band should have called it a day when Dusty Hill passed, I think. This band were Trey Hombres. Excuse my dreadful Spanish pronunciation. But without Dusty Hill, I think uh, it's just not the same. Billy Gibbons should have continued as a solo artist and what a solo artist he would be. But to have some guy in a fake beard filling, standing in Dusty's shoes, it feels a little bit pantomimic to me. To take a band like Rush, I mean, they knew how to bow out gracefully, I think. When a band's identity is so tied up with three core members, you lose one of those members, it just doesn't quite work, really. I mean, can you imagine Cream without Jack Bruce? It just, it's just not right, is it? The Billy Gibbons could go out and uh, play the music of ZZ Top, but let's be honest, the brand ZZ Top brings in a lot more punters, a lot more dosh, and we could all buy it, and it makes for a really nice T-shirt as well, doesn't it? But I just think that sloppy bottom end and Dusty's distinct vocals and moves are kind of what I miss about this band. There's an interesting quote attributed to Buddha. Three things cannot be long hidden, the sun, the moon and the truth. It's a nice quote, but you remove any one of those elements and it just doesn't quite work. Which is kind of how I feel about this band. Number six is Bruce Springsteen. A lot of you voted for Bruce and I totally disagree with you. Many of you may not like his music, which is not really the point. And also Springsteen is a kind of a political dabbler, isn't he? Which often gets up, uh, gets people's goat a little bit. But despite that, he's uh, still singing live and singing well, as far as I can tell. The E Street Band is still absolutely fantastic. And he's still putting in a three hour show of live, live music, which is what it's all about. So I don't see any reason why Springsteen should quit. Long may he continue. Number five is Guns N' Roses. And this band have been hawking their one good album for many, many years now. And Axel is struggling vocally. I mean, he always, even in his prime, he sounded like a man that had slammed down a little bit too hard on his own scrotum. But with age, he's even struggling to do that and slash ambles across the stage, you know, cultivating that hard rock ennui. 
cigarette hanging from his lip like a suicide clinging to a ledge, with the audience shouting, please jump for heaven's sake. Some of these bands just look bored and tired to me as they drag their carcasses out onto the stage. The audience with light as a loft in tribute to the November rain of rock's finest moments. And watch it all get flushed down the crapper in a two-hour performance. Hey, they come away with that life-affirming selfie of them and that big screen behind them. But I think with Axel's uh, deteriorating tonsils with age, I suppose one could say it's perhaps not so easy after all. Number four is Chicago. So many of you voted for this band. I'm not so sure really. They still have some founding members in the group and they're playing live music. However, I personally feel that this band finished really with the death of Terry Kath. That's when uh, this band were their, their best. Those, those, that first album by the Chicago Transit Authority, just sublime. That's before they descended into the schmaltzy balladry, when they were really exciting, before they descend into elevator music. Anyway, I sit on the fence where Chicago are concerned. Should they call it a day or not? What do you think? Number three is the Rolling Stones. I mean, this band had become a kind of shortbread tin souvenir of the band they once were. Their set list is tired and overplayed as they drag their aged bodies through Jumping Jack Flash one more time. With Richards looking like he can barely stay awake and Jagger strutting about like an octogenarian cockerel, sporting a face like a chewed toffee. Now, I'm not sure that this band should be on this list. They're still playing live music and singing and performing live. Well, allegedly, anyway, I've heard that, uh, I've heard the stories about them, some guitar parts being played from behind the stage, but that's just a rumour. But the last time this band played a really interesting set list, it was probably the Voodoo Lounge Tour. They're no longer dangerous, but just corporate rock and expensive accompaniment to a family picnic. And I say this as a huge Stones fan. I think Exile on Main Street is one of the finest albums ever. But I wish they'd do something radical to spice up the set list or just not bother. I think they just like to play it safe. And why not? I suppose the vast majority of their audience these days are just those that don't really know much beyond their greatest hits package. Number two is Steely Dan. I mean, since the death of Walter Becker, I don't think they can should really go out under the banner of this band. It's really just a Donald Fagan solo show. I mean, let's call it for what it is. But then, of course, the name Steely Dan brings in a lot more dosh than Donald Fagan plays the music of. Again, it comes down to legal use of the name, and I'll refer you to the answer I gave for Leonard Skinner. Number one is the Eagles. Take it easy, I hear you say. The good ship Eagles, under the stewardship of Don Henley, should have docked years ago, especially after the death of Glenn Fry. Their concerts are always marked by absolute pristine sound and an attention to detail, sonically at least. So much to the point they've decided not to sully the performance by actually singing live. Yes, of course, that spectre of miming has raised its ugly head with this band as well. Not that they are a band, really. It's just Don Henley and some hired guns. That was the contract that Don Felder refused to sign, really. And quite rightly so. I mean, when this band go out to celebrate the anniversary of the Hotel California album, and they don't involve Don Felder, which would have given it a little bit more legitimacy, I think. I just think that just speaks volumes about this Don Henley franchise. This band are done, as far as I'm concerned, with allegations of miming. They should just go, I think. And there you are. That's 10 artists that should retire as voted for by you. I should just leave it there. I urge you to click like, subscribe, and check that notification bell. If you've enjoyed this video, please do share it. Other than that, I'll leave you with my closing salvo, which is hope you're well, staying safe, and of course, at you. Keep listening.